and welcome to Weasel Jaw Digital. Today we're going to be taking a look at the TIE Fighter, the twin ion engine fighter of the Imperials. This is their counter to the X Wing, it's kind of their standard starfighter. It's kind of an all round ship, it can be used for dogfighting. It can be used for taking out capital ships. It's kind of an all-purpose, jack-of-all-trades. It's not as good at taking out capital ships as the bomber, not as good at taking down fighters as the interceptor. It's kind of middle ground. So we'll take a look at all the various options, build a couple builds, and take it out for a test run. First up is our primary weapon system. We have five choices. Of course, a standard laser cannon is not too bad. Um, acceptable DPS, long range, it works well enough. It doesn't have to be necessarily your first upgrade that you want to spend points on, but... Next up is the Guided Burst Cannon. This fires in bursts of weapon fire, so like four shots. Um, has the same range. In this case, its DPS is greatly reduced because it is auto-tracking a little bit, so that's your trade-off. If you struggle at actually hitting enemy units, this is a good compromise where if you can get them close to your reticle, close to your crosshairs, the, the weapon will help guide itself a little bit and get you more hits on target. So if you struggle to aim um, due to the speed of the ships and whatnot, not a bad option. The burst cannon is actually what we're going to be setting up with. And it has a little bit higher DPS than either the standard or the guided, obviously. Nice fast fire in weapons, fires off a burst of weapon fire. It's a little less effective at that thousand meter range because you're really guessing and putting all of your eggs into one basket because you're sending out that burst of shots. The standard laser cannon is a little better at max range because you can kind of guide that shot in and follow the tracing of your laser fire. The Plasverse Laser Cannon is a charging weapon. Um, it's got a short range of 600 meters, really high DPS. It can do a lot of damage. But I find the charging aspect of it and the short range tend to be too big a negative to overcome that increase in damage. You're going to spend your time charging that weapon, and then just when you want to release it is when you lose track of your target, or you can't keep them in the crosshairs to hit them. So it's not my favorite weapon. Next up is the Ion Cannon. It can be a useful weapon, but it's not the one we're going to go with in this build. A huge chunk of Ion damage. It'll tear shields apart on enemy ships and capital ships. And it will shut down fighters, so it can actually incapacitate them. You can also use it against ship systems too. But for this, we're going to be using our Burst Cannon. Left Auxiliary for the TIE Fighter is always going to be our repair system. You do not have shields to rely on. You need to be able to repair the health of your ship as much as possible. Um, you're going to use this thing a lot. So you definitely want that. The right auxiliary slot is going to be our concussion missile. Two second lock time, thousand meter range, thousand damage. Six and a half second cooldown with six shots and medium homing capabilities. Your other options are the Assault Shield, which reduces incoming damage by 90% from the front for three seconds with a 20 second cooldown. That is a very long cooldown and a very short duration for that damage reduction. And it's only for damage reduction from the front. If someone's tailing you or you've already passed the capital ship, this really has no effect. So. Not one of my favorites. Ion Missile has a purpose on this ship, but not in this build. The Ion Torpedo is interesting. Um, 24,000 Ion damage is pretty impressive. However, that's not what we're using this for. That's more of a capital ship weapon. It requires a lock, has a long lock range. It cannot fire under the minimum, minimum range. It is an ion weapon and it has weak homing, so it's not good against other fighters. The Onslaught rockets have some use, um, but not in this build. They are dumb fire rockets for 100 damage each, but you can fire them very quickly. And then you have the Proton Torpedo, which is 4,000 damage. 
Again, lock is required, has a long lock on range, and weak homing, so it's more of use against capital ships. So in this build, again, we're going with our repair system and the concussion missile. Our countermeasures are set as a default to seeker warheads, which is exactly where we want them. The chaff particles fire out a ball of chaff behind you. Um, it lasts for three seconds. It's a nine second cooldown. It's only effective against missiles that are coming from directly behind you. If that missile is coming from any other direction, it's gonna hit you instead of that chaff. And then the sensor jammer um, breaks all sensor locks on your ship and makes it impossible to get a lock for four seconds. However, you only get one use. And even if you do get ammo for it, it's a 26 second cooldown, not the most effective. The Seeker Warheads are wonderful though. 750 meter range, 12 second cooldown, four ammo, and it fires out two little warheads at a time, which will seek out and destroy any incoming missiles. It's a very easy to use weapon. It's pretty foolproof. It's very effective. It will help you stay alive. Keep it on the Seeker Warheads. Now your hull, you have a lot of different options. There's the Reflect Hull, which gives you some stealthing capabilities. I do not find this to be all that useful. Um, you're really not effective at its range to do anything. So it's not that useful. Uh, by the time you get into weapons range, this doesn't have an effect anyways. So it really doesn't do a whole lot for you. The reinforced hull is enticing. You do not have any shields, so increasing your health by 60% really helps out. However, this is a dogfighter. You're going to need to be able to take out enemy ships, and giving up 35% of your acceleration, more importantly, 25% of your maneuverability, is going to mean you're going to lose in those dogfights. They're going to be able to target you, they're going to be able to stick on your tail, they're going to be able to ditch you, um, you're not going to be able to keep your, your aiming reticle on them. So the reinforced hull is really not a great option. The lamina steel hull, um, it reduces auxiliary damage or missile damage while increasing primary, primary range damage. Um, so lasers. So you're trading uh, additional laser damage for reduced missile damage. But we already have the dampener hull and the Seeker Warhead. So we're probably not going to be taking a lot of secondary damage anyways. So this really isn't a good option either. The Agile Hull increases acceleration and maneuverability, which sounds really great for a dogfighter, but it's at a loss of 20% of your health. And I don't like giving up that much health, especially on a ship that doesn't have any shields to compensate for that. So the one I always end up going with is the Dampener Hull. It increases hostile lock time by 100%, which means it takes twice as long for enemies to get missile locks on you. And it also reduces your health by only 10%. So that should help deter missile attacks much better than anything else. For your engines, there are a lot of options, but really only one good one. We have the unstable twin engines, which increases speed and acceleration while greatly reducing health and giving you an added bonus of exploding upon death where you could do damage or destroy other ships. But the chances of anyone being close enough for that to really work is slim to none. Twin ion jet engines um, increase the rate at which you build your boost charge, but decrease how long the boost charge lasts. So it's good for getting short, quick bursts of speed. The twin thrust engine increases your speed, but reduces acceleration maneuverability. Since we need to be doing some dogfighting in this, not the best option. The propulsion engine increases acceleration by 100%, but reduces your maneuverability. Acceleration is not as important as maneuverability, so again, a bad option. The slam engine is interesting, but not one I really care for. It increases your passive boost charge rate, so you charge the boost a little bit faster, but it lowers your max speed. And it gives you a passive boost charge generation, which means even when you don't have 
full power going to your engines, you can still build some boost charge. But it's not really enough to be really effective. Which brings us to the last and my favorite here, the micro thrust engine. This adds 30% maneuverability to your ship. That makes it way easier to make turns, to dodge missiles, um, to keep on target against enemy crafts, or to shake enemy crafts that are flying up behind you. So it increases maneuverability, but you lose some acceleration and some max speed. Since most of our time is going to be spent dogfighting, I'm okay with that trade-off. So there's our build, Burst Cannon. Repair System, Concussion Missile, Seeker Warhead, Damner Hull, and Microthrust Engine. Now our secondary build is going to be a slight twist on this, and there's two ways you can go about it. The less effective way is the Ion Cannon Blasters, and then bringing in either your Dumbfire Rockets or your Concussion Missile. And this is an okay build. Um, it's good for taking out Capital Ship Shields, it's good for disabling enemy fighters. It's And then once you have them disabled, then you can hit them with like the concussion missile or the onslaught rockets. What I actually like better though is the burst cannon and then the ion missile. This missile has a long lock-on range of 1500 meters, so you can start locking on them before they even get into range of your main weapons. You fire it off, it does 6,000 damage ion damage which will disable their ships and allow you to then fly into range and get them with the burst cannon. So this also is a dogfighter. We're going to keep our repair system, our seeker warheads, our dampener hull, and our microthrust engine. So let's take this out for a quick little practice run to show you it in action. We're going to do the easiest level story mode. Um, so we're going to have some extra ammo in this practice mode. Um, and, what works best for you? and you're going to be almost invincible. Um, so it's not real life gameplay here. But it gives you a feel for what you can do with this ship in these builds. So we need some enemies. Oh, that's the wrong ship. I'm in my bomber. Need our TIE fighter. Need to get into range, switch it over our weapon systems, and we fire off our bursts. And you can see, even at full speed here, we can turn pretty well due to our maneuverability. The missiles are medium homing missiles. So anytime you can line someone up in that, you can fire off a missile while you then deal with a different target, hopefully destroy both. We are going to switch over to our Ion Missile TIE Fighter. We got this one lone guy that we'll demonstrate this on. So you see it started locking before we even got into a thousand meter range. It took out his shields and it disabled it. So now he's just floating dead in space. And that is a really awesome proposition. It's got a long um, reload time compared to your standard missiles, but the effect on it is great. And it's really demoralizing to the enemy. Um, what I mean by that is I've had it used against me several times. And there's nothing worse than being you know, 
having your power stripped. Your shields are gone. You're just floating dead in space. There's nothing you can do to protect yourself. If someone fires a missile at you, you can't fire anti-missile systems. You're just stuck. Oh, he had some countermeasures. Let's see if we can find someone else here. Oh, there's an X-Wing. You see, the shields are gone. He's floating dead in space. He's an easy target. And like I said, it's very annoying to the enemy when you do that. We're going to head back to the hangar. We're going to talk about one other potential option for you. And that's having a TIE fighter set up to take care of capital ships. So you've gained the advantage. It's now time to attack the capital ships. Um, but you don't have a good bomber set up yet. Which if you don't, you should watch my bomber setup video. Um, the thing that you can do here is you can change things out. Again, you could go ion cannons and just really rip into them. I find, though, that the ion torpedo... I'm not going to buy this right now. I don't have the resources for it. The ion torpedo is great. It's got that long lock-on range of 1,500 meters, and it does 24,000 ion damage. This is great against the Neb Bs and against the MC-75. Um, it'll strip a huge chunk of shields out and make it easier for you to start doing damage with your primary weapons. It also, by just taking it as the missile instead of the ion cannons, leaves it so that you can still dogfight pretty effectively. So, hopefully you gain some insight into the TIE fighter from this video. Hopefully those builds will help you be more effective out there in space while you're serving the Empire. And I uh, would really appreciate it if you were to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, we'll definitely be bringing you more Star Wars Squadron content here in the future.